If you ever get the opportunity to visit the United States, don't pass it up. You'll find so much there with amazing sights and places on the grounds of these historic monuments. Here are seven shocking things recently discovered in the United States. Number seven, Judah Color Rock. You can scale the mountains of this country for miles, hundreds of miles even, and maybe more, and you still won't find every secret hidden among the rocky walls. But the mountains of North Carolina have some pretty obvious ancient stories carved into them, with one in particular about the giant named Judah Culler, his story can be seen on a popular hiking area that's called the Devil's Corthos today. It's a tale from the Cherokee's lore and goes back over a thousand years in history. The main focus, Judah Culler, was a guard over the hunting grounds below. He sat high above in the mountains in a spot called his Judgment Seat. The legend then goes on to say that a group of hunters had wandered into this territory despite his warnings and increasing demands to leave. It got to the point that the giant had to leap down from his mountain to finally chase them away. But when he landed, his larger-than-life hand sunk into a soapstone boulder hut same boulder is still around to check out, and it's called Judah Color Rock. It's a seven-finger handprint in a single corner of the rock. But there are also some ancient petroglyphs alongside it. Historians have used this evidence to say that the Cherokee tribes likely carved the glyphs around 500 AD. It's all a bit mysterious in an intriguing way, but there's plenty of other marks of Judah color to check out as well. Number six, the Nevada shoe tree. We've seen a bite tree, but in middle gate of Nevada, it looks like there's an even weirder shoe tree out there. It sits along the Highway 50 and against a barren desert with mountains in view. It's a cottonwood tree, and if you didn't know any better, you might think it produces sneakers instead of fruit. The origin of this backdrop started when a nude camping couple argued nearby. The woman threatened to walk away while husband warned her that she'd have to walk barefoot. He then took her shoes and threw them up into the tree before driving off to a bar nearby. It took some convincing of the bartender before he decided to head back where his wife remained still barefoot. According to the story, they came back a few years later with their first kid and tossed his shoes up there as well. Now whether this is a true tale or a local story for fun, plenty of people have decided to uphold the tradition and toss their shoes up as well. They even give off a dazzling look in the wintertime, when the background is covered in desert frost. Or at least they did until 2010, when the tree was cut down by vandals. But hope wasn't lost, and in 2017, a new tree was designated as a replacement shoe tree by the locals. It should still be up waiting for more people to give up their shoes. Number 5. Time Travel Mart how much would you pay to go back to the past and buy that one thing you just can't get anymore? Follow-up question. How much would you pay to buy something from the future while you can't exactly get what you're hoping for? There's a fun spot in Los Angeles called the Time Travel Mart that lets you enjoy the idea. The store features a list of historical items for purchase, such as mammoth chunks to robot milk, but it also serves as a great educational tool for students trying to learn about history. The idea behind the Mart started as a plan to convince kids that learning can be cool. 826 Lay is the local chapter of a national organization that wants to encourage free student learning and educational tools. But once they claim their location zoning laws got in the way of their services being free, they were forced to set up a retail establishment, so they made the executive decision to make it as interesting and informational as they could. Outside of learning though, there are plenty of reasons to check out the store and even make a few purchases. All funds are transferred over to their schooling supplies and needs, and most people working are volunteers that aim to help the children that benefit from the organization. But really, 
Where else can you go to get a Victorian iPod? Better stock up while you can. The future is almost here. Number 4. Hole in the Wall Theatre Peafalls aren't generally considered to be a good thing to find and especially not to use, but that all adds to the charm of this specialised peafall cinema. It's hidden in an alley deep in the heart of the Mission District of San Francisco. And when we say hidden, we mean that it's literally a hole in the wall. If you peek into the small hole, you'll be able to catch whatever silent film is playing at that moment. It's a great blast to the past from generations long before any of our own, unless you're an 80-year-old walking around random alleyways. But aside from being a small and inconspicuous hole, you'll also have to crouch down or stretch your neck out in order to actually see through it. If you do, you'll be treated to plenty of short films on an endless loop that play all day and all night. You could technically stop by whenever you want. The only drawback is that you'll probably have to be told about it before you go and try to find it on your own. Surely someone must have walked by and decided to stick their eye up against a random wall although, right? There's a list of films that are shown right below the people, but it isn't the most noticeable thing if you aren't looking for it already. Aside from that, there aren't any other signposts or any indicators of what you should be doing. So now that you know, what are you waiting for? Number 3. A Sweet Graveyard When someone dies, there's a commemorative of task to honour their death with a funeral or maybe a tombstone burial. But when it's a product that's no longer for sale, usually it's just a metaphor. The product wasn't actually alive, so how can it be dead? Just ask Ben and Jerry but only after you check their ice cream flavor graveyard. Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield are the masterminds behind the iconic Ben and Jerry's ice cream shop in mass marketed ice cream pints. They first opened their shop in 1978 and have since experimented with a delightful catalog of flavors that have withstood the tests of time, or most of them at least. For every flavor that's been removed from their limited edition status or simply taken off the market. There's a special place in Waterbury, Vermont, where you can pay your respects. It's a literal flavor graveyard. The idea started off as a web page that kept track of each flavor you could no longer buy in store, but somewhere along the way. That idea grew until real tombstones were made and a new tourist attraction was born. Among the headstones are something like 300 different discontinued treats. They each even get their own poem dedicated to what could have been if the flavor was better appreciated. It started back in 1997 when there were only four flavors to lay to rest. It was the dastardly mashed economic crunch, ethan almond and Tuskegee chunk. Since then, there have been a lot of interesting additions including au pear and sugar plum. But just because one flavor is dead doesn't necessarily mean it's gone for good. An online poll was started by the company to bring back a special flavor, so there's still hope. Number two, the Michigan Mammoth. Everyone's always looking for dinosaur bones out in the wild, but this Michigan farmer came across a completely different type of animal. The farmer was James Bristle, and along with his neighbor, the two were trying to dig a trench for their drainage pipe in that wheat field. But suddenly Bristol's hoe hit something eight feet below ground where there should have only been dirt. It didn't take long before they both realized that they had stumbled upon something massive. It was a three foot long woolly mammoth bone. Bristol later told reporters, we didn't know what it was, but we knew it was certainly a lot bigger than a cow bone. His next guess was that it could have been a dinosaur bone. So, he contacted the University of Michigan's Museum of Paleontology and set out to have it studied. A team of researchers quickly came out to investigate, but Bristle gave them a hard deadline of just a single day to dig because harvest season was quickly approaching and that drain pipe still wasn't installed. But they managed to meet their deadline 
and excavated around 20% of the mammoth bones. It was an amazing find, considering that only five other examples haven't claimed in such great condition. Bristol donated the find to the museum, claiming that it should belong to everyone. He said a lot of people will benefit from being able to see this mammoth for many years to come. If I can make people happy about doing it, then I consider that a good day. Number 1. Classic Film Vault Unless you've experienced firsthand just how big the United States is, you might not realize just how far apart each state is. The distance from Hollywood to Kansas City, for instance, is roughly 1,600 miles, or around 2,600 kilometers. That's more than triple the amount of distance from Spain to France, and yet it barely covers the halfway point before moving on to the rest of the United States. So, when we say there's a Hollywood trove hiding out of sight and just below Kansas City, it might be a bit hard to believe. But it's true, just 160 feet below ground is a warehouse where thousands on thousands of Hollywood film movies are lined up in old school canisters along these shelf walls. The collection belongs to the underground vaults and storage facility, and they have all the classics from Gone to the Wind to Voyage to the Bottom of the Seat, although the manager won't reveal what else is hiding down there. Some movie companies don't want others to know that they've stashed copies of certain media in such a publicly known place, so they keep the list on a need-to-know basis. But according to the manager of the warehouse, Brian Corwin, there are other hidden storages with their own classic movie collections as well. A lot of the companies keep them separated in case of an earthquake or some other natural disaster. But Corwin went on to mention that he's got at least a hundred years' worth of content stored in his warehouse alone. At least he'll never run out of anything to watch. So, if you aren't spooked out by some of these shocking discoveries, would you still want to come and see what else the United States has to offer? There are a lot more mysteries than what we've covered here, but we like to hope that we've given a bit of insight to the unusual and mystifying treats of the massive country. But there's always more to look out for, so we'll keep our eyes and ears open for our next round of topics.